Hey friends, hope you're well. So over two years ago, Apple launched their first ever over-ear headphones, the AirPods Max, and they were a hit at launch. They were sold out for months, even though they were criticized for its high price tag, lack of lossless audio, and the very questionable smart case. But a lot has changed since then, and the AirPods Max have even improved over time with significant software upgrades. So here is my long-term review of the AirPods Max, and let's explore if these are still worth the premium price tag of $549, compare them to the newer AirPods Pro 2, and if you're in the market for headphones, which you probably are if you're watching this video, uh, let's see if there are any better alternatives or if we should just flat out wait for the AirPods Max 2. Let's start with the things that I've disliked during my time with the AirPods Max, and there's frankly a few things here. The glaring and most obvious dislike is its price tag, which has more or less remained the same over the years, which is unsurprising. At $549, these are a very premium product, and in fact, is still one of the most expensive headphones on the market, and I can understand why it's a big turn off for some people. Although I think the price tag is justified to an extent and it does offer a premium listening experience, the price tag is just so high, it's a significant barrier for most people. Uh, you'd also think that at this price tag, a 3.5 millimeter to lightning adapter would be included. It's pretty essential for those who want the best audio quality and to use these pair of headphones on the plane, but nope, you know, in typical <laughs> Apple fashion, they're of course a $35 separate purchase but it is a must buy for travelers or audiophiles. I'm really hoping to see in future renditions of this headphone to include the 3.5 millimeter adapter and in heck, just remove the lightning port for USB-C for convenience. Also on the first day that I used the smart case, I disliked it so much that I immediately went out and bought a third party case that I still use to this day. And I mean, this thing, the smart case, hardly provides adequate protection for such expensive headphones. And I can't believe in this day and age, there's no physical on off button for the headphones and instead the case is actually required to power down your headphones. So picking these up day to day to use, they're usually dead unless I'm charging them every second day. So the lack of the on off button is one of the biggest gripes that I have with these uh, headphones to this day. And this leather case I got from Walnut is a more traditional lay flat case. And of course it has that magnetic tab in between the headphones to activate low power mode, which is so important. I've traveled with these plenty over the last year and they're just so much better than the smart case overall. If you're an audio enthusiast, you already know that lossless audio is not supported with these headphones, unfortunately, and that's because Apple only uses standard AAC codec over Bluetooth, but to be fair, it's still not yet possible to hear true lossless audio from any wireless headphones yet. But here is where I praise Apple and it's in their persistent software updates to improve the AirPods Max performance and audio quality since its launch. With the release of iOS 14, we were given spatial audio, which is incredible on the AirPods Max. It gives you an impressive surround sound experience based on the real time orientation of your head. So it feels like instruments and voices are coming from several different positions on your headphones. Then iOS 16 also introduced the new LC3 Bluetooth codec, which meant further audio quality improvements for the AirPods Max, and it even saw lower latency and improved battery life. I found that the updates addressed the issues that cropped up around distortion and connectivity issues as well. Two other cool updates since its launch worth mentioning that makes these headphones even better and slightly different to when it was launched is a new transparency mode called Conversation Boost, which enhances the audio of conversations while in transparency mode for clearer conversation and also automatic switching for easier switching in between devices within the Apple ecosystem. Where these headphones still shine brightest is its unbelievable audio quality. It's still the one to beat two years on. They deliver a rich, impressive sound with deep bass and incredibly crisp highs. I've been listening to both Spotify at max sound quality and Apple Music's high res lossless quality for months now and it sounds exceptional. Even over Bluetooth, especially with all the software updates over the years that give us that much of a better listening experience. 
Plugging these headphones in via the 3.5 millimeter adapter made the experience even richer and it's truly as good as it gets. Honestly, it sounds as close to true lossless audio as possible to the point where I really highly doubt you'd be able to hear the difference unless you have trained ears. So I personally don't think the lack of lossless audio is a big issue for me personally. The active noise cancellation is also beyond top notch. It does the best job in blocking out external noise to the point where I almost forgot the hum of the plane on flights until I stopped using them. But here is my hot take. Although the noise cancellation is second to none, the newer AirPods Pro 2 and its noise cancellation ability come surprisingly close to the max at less than half the price. And that's obviously thanks to its new H2 chip and that great in-ear fit. They're honestly just as great for most situations for me, like going to the gym, sitting in a cafe, or just working at home. I don't know, am I the only one that finds the AirPods Pro 2 noise cancellation to be that close to the AirPods Max? And two years on, you still cannot deny its iconic design and stellar aluminum and mesh build quality. To this day, I still get people saying, yeah, damn, those headphones look really premium and high quality. And that's because they are. They look and feel premium. They're probably the best looking headphones I've used yet. If I had to be critical, I'd say they're on the heavier side, so you might run into some discomfort during longer listening sessions, but the mesh band on top has been really comfortable and breathable to me. The memory foam cups covered in mesh also have held up really well too, unlike my previous Bose QC35s where I had to replace the cups literally every year. I have heard of others saying that the mesh or the silicone type material has deteriorated over the years, but in my experience, it's held up extremely well. But that said, I leave it in the case most times, and these weren't purchased on launch day either, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. Also, after countless times spinning and clicking the digital crown and noise cancellation buttons, both remain responsive as ever and satisfyingly tactile. They're really a joy to use. So two years on, at the exact same price tag since launch, are the Apple AirPods Max still worth it? Well, they're undeniably still a premium pair of headphones that lead the charge, even with companies releasing newer headphones like Sony's XM5, the Bose 700 series, and QC45, but even then, the AirPods Max still holds up really well. But as time goes by without a successor, competing headphones do become more tempting over time. If it's glaring flaws don't bother you and you're in the Apple ecosystem, it's still an amazing buy. Being able to instantly switch between iPhone to a Mac and even an Apple TV really does uh, make it a priceless purchase if you're in the Apple ecosystem. So I guess the question here is more whether they're still worth buying with the likely successor in the pipeline uh, to be released. I'd say if you have the budget for it, they're still a great buy, especially considering we do not yet know when the AirPods Max 2 are scheduled to be dropped. But don't discount the AirPods Pro 2 if you're on a smaller budget. They do give the Max a run for its money with its H2 chip performance. And if you're not in the Apple ecosystem, the Sony XM5 were an option I seriously considered. It's still not easy to stomach the $549 price tag, especially especially considering the subpar case and the accessories that aren't included, but fortunately, they're now often on sale. In fact, I actually bought mine uh, from Amazon for $449, so roughly $100 off. And I'm not sure if it's still discounted on Amazon, but I'll leave a direct link to it below in the description box for you to check out, just in case they are. And another great option is getting a second hand pair from a marketplace like eBay. I've seen them go for $200 to $300, which is a great deal. Either way, you cannot go wrong with a pair of AirPods Max two years on as they're still as chic as ever. If you made it to the end of the video, drop the code word comment APM2 and let me know what features you'd like to see in the next generation AirPods Max. I'll leave a video right here for you to check out. It's my review of the Apple 4K TV and if it's still worth it, I think they make a great pairing with the Apple AirPods Max. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.